planted seeds. And he kept planting seeds repeatedly as the book was being written. And as he planted those seeds, it was to reach a conclusion that he felt the church needed to know. And that conclusion begins in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. When he says, finally, my brethren, he says, in light of everything that I've said, in light of all the thoughts that we've articulated, in light of all of the, the words that we've given you, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So everything that he said up to now, every thought, every concept, every alliteration of who God is, was to create this conclusion. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So the first thing that he tells us is that if we're going to navigate this world and we are going to be effective in representing him in the midst of this world, then we have to be able to get in shape. We have to be able to be strong. But we have to be able to possess a strength that is not natural in nature, but a strength that is spiritual in nature. And so he says the very first thing, you need to get a hold of God's strength in your life. Then he turns around and he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He says the first thing is you've got to get in shape. But he says if you're going to navigate this world, then you're going to have to get dressed. And you're going to have to get dressed so that you're ready for what's going to come next. And so he begins with his conclusion with two thoughts. Get strong, get in shape, get dressed, so you'll be ready to stand against all the devices, strategies of the evil one. He then gets very specific. And what he does is he says, if you're going to get dressed, a lot of people are confused about what to wear. But he said, I want to tell you exactly what you're to wear. And what he did was he provided an illustration to the people in Ephesus the church at Ephesus, the people who were going to read the book of Ephesians, and he gives them a picture. It was a picture that would immediately jar them because they could relate to it. They could see it. They saw it every day. And it was the imagery of a Roman soldier totally dressed, prepared for battle. Now, they saw that every day. The Romans had occupied their land. They were everywhere. They would march through their cities. So everyone had a visual to relate to. And he's going to take that visual. Now for us in our day, it would be a little bit different. It would be like him saying, I need you to be prepared so that you're like a Navy SEAL. You're like Marine Recon. You're like army rangers, and you're like a Green Beret. You're like a tier one operator. And all of us, unfortunately, because of everything that has happened in our world, we know that image. We know what a Navy SEAL looks like. We know what an army ranger is. We know what a marine recon is. We know what a green beret is. We know what a tier one operator is. We've seen it. It is visualized all the time in news. It's visualized all the time in all of the books, and we all have an image. And in the way that Paul wanted them to get an image because he wanted them to understand what they needed to do next, he wants us to get an image. But in Paul, in giving that image, he just doesn't want you to get the picture. He then wanted to give them the reality. And so he says that you need to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. 
and you need to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies, the various tactics of the evil one. But then he says, but first of all, he's very specific. He says, but first of all, you need to put on the belt of truth. And there's never been a time in the world that what he's about to say isn't more applicable than it is today. Because we have great platforms that allow the communication of thought. But all thought that is communicated does not represent truth. And he says, in the midst of everything that is being said, you have to wrap yourselves in God's truth. He says, first and foremost, put on, put on the belt of truth. Now, why did he start with this? Because it stabilizes everything else that he's going to ask you to do. It begins to position you that everything else that is going to follow this is going to be able to be stabilized by this one piece of equipment that you have that belt on, and that belt is going to be key, but that belt he compares to truth. He mentions it first because he knows that the first thing that you're going to have to deal with is the fact that the devil lies to you. The devil not only lies to you, he lies about you. And he says, if you're going to be effective, you're going to have to be able to cut through the lies that are going to come into your life, the lies to you and the lies about you. And he did that because Jesus in his own writings articulated this. He said, the devil is a liar. And in John chapter 8 and verse 44, Jesus says it clearly. There is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks from his own heritage, but he speaks for he is a liar and he is the father of all lies. And what Paul knew in that day is what we know today, that if you are going to stand firm in life, then one of the things is you are going to have to cut through all the lies that will intimidate your life, that all the lies that come your way, all the lies that you're going to have to be able to take that piece of material and you're going to have to cut through them. And one of the things that I tell people all the time is that one of the reasons that we are so pronounced in being able to advocate children's ministry is because we know that children, they have a future. But on the other hand, when you speak to adults, you speak to them about their past. And that's why we came up decades ago with a phrase. At Grace, we have youth and children's ministry and adult care is also provided. Because one of the most difficult tasks that I have or any pastor has is that we have to get you beyond the lies that you've been told that you have accepted as truth. And in this room right now, there are those of you who have accepted lies as though they were the truth. You've accepted things that have been said to you. You have accepted things that have been said about you. And the only way that you can be effective with God is that you've got to take the lies and you've got to cut through them so that you can see God's truth. See, the lies that the enemy propagates, he proclaims them so he can sidetrack you, so he can get you off course, so you don't believe what God says and you don't embrace what God says about you. And so there are things that God has said to you that you don't accept because you've listened to the lies for so long. 
And for some of you, you did not grow up in a position of faith. And some of you that did grow up in a position of faith, you deviated for a period of time from that faith. And because you deviated, there were lies that were told that you accepted, and those lies that you told began to get in your head, and they began to get in your heart. And for you to accept what God says, he has to challenge those lies, but you're used to hearing those lies. You're used to accepting those lies. You're used to embracing those lies. And God says, for you to be effective in what God wants you to do, he's got to get the truth in you. And that means that he's got to take his truth and he's got to break through the prevailing lies. See, some of you were lied to and you accepted the truth that you're nobody. Some of you were lied to and you accepted the truth that you're not important. Some of you were lied to and you accepted the idea that you're a nobody. Some of you were lied to, and you accepted the truth that you cannot ever accomplish anything. Some of you were lied to, and you accepted the truth that you are dumb. Some of you were lied to, and you accepted the truth that you are are not special. Some of you have accepted lies that this world has told you because it is the echo chamber of the devil and you accepted those, you embraced those, and you live with those and it doesn't matter what God says to you. You think you're a nobody. You think that you're a no one. You don't think that you're special. You don't think that you're important. You don't think that you can do anything. You think that everything you do will fail. And so God says, you got to put on the belt of truth. You've got to work through what you've embraced your whole life. See, the doctrine of lies is simple. There are the lies that the devil tells us. Then there are the lies that we tell ourselves. And then there are the lies that others tell us. Until you get past the lies in life, you have no ground that you can stand on in life. And so anything that you do makes you unstable because which lie are you going to believe today? Well, I can't do anything. Well, I'm too old. I'm too young. God doesn't really love me like he loves others. God really isn't interested in me like he's interested in others. God doesn't really care about me profoundly. That's why Paul said, first of all, the belt of truth. You've got to put God's truth around you. And you've got to wrap your life in it. And it doesn't matter how many people tell you it's not true. God says it is true. And so any of these misreputations are devastating if accepted and received. They become disqualifying concepts in your life. People never rise up to their potential because they've listened to lies. People never live anything but an ordinary life because they've listened to lies. And because they've listened to lies, the very essence of the words that Jesus declared in John chapter 10, I've come that you might have life to the fullest extent, to the greatest levels possible. I've come that you might have life abundantly. So people live below the standard because they've embraced the lies. See, God's truth is liberating. God's truth is freeing. God's truth takes you beyond the distortions that have surrounded you. And I would so much that I could convince some of you how loved you are how special you are, and how important you are. But you lived your whole life being told otherwise. 
and you've held tight to the lies rather than being open to the truth. And so you live with insecurity. You live with inferiority. You live with the constant thought that someone's not gonna like you. And because of that, you've never thought God would like you. And so what the Bible tells us is this, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Free from what? The lies that you've been told. From all the things that have been said to you, from all the things that have been said about you, God wants to free you from lies, but that only comes the day that you're willing to wrap yourself in God's truth. And so will that be the day for you? Will it be today? Will today be the day that you will no longer embrace harshness that was spoken about you? Even the lies that you've told yourself. And one of those lies is that nobody likes me and it's because you've learned not to like you. You find every defect, you find every flaw, you magnify every misstep, and yet God says, if you ever know the truth, it's gonna free you. Oh, it's gonna free me from my problems. No, it's gonna free you from the lies. Because until you're free on the inside, you are always bound on the outside. And that's why he goes on to say, whom the sun sets free inside is free indeed outside. So he says, first of all, you've got to come to terms with the truth. That what God says is true about you, that it's so about you. And Jesus emphasized the value of the truth in John chapter 17 and verse 17 when he says, the words that I speak unto you are truth. He says, as a counter to what the devil will tell you, who is going to lie, who is going to distort, who is going to put you down, he says, I want you to know something. My words are true. And so when I look at you, because in that same chapter, he prays this word. Lord, let them know that you love them the same way you love me. See, some of you can believe you're loved by God, but none of you could believe that and imagine that you're loved by God to the way he would love Jesus the perfect son of God. But Jesus said, Lord, open their eyes that they might know. The level of insecurity has to stop, but it only stops when you believe the truth. The level of inferiority has to stop, but it only stops when you accept the truth. Now, one of the things that we've said in this study is everything that Paul has set up to now is to reach this location, to get you to this place. Everything was a building block. Every seed he plants, every concept that he articulates, every word that he has breathed into this book up to now is to get when he says, finally, my brethren, I'm getting you to this place because when he says, accept the truth, the truth that he's talking about is the truth of chapter one of Ephesians. That's the belt he wants you to wrap. That's what he wants you to wrap your life in. And in Ephesians chapter one, he gives you a series of truths. In verse three of chapter one, he says that you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wrap yourself in the truth that you're not inadequate. Don't live with being inadequate when you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
Don't live with that sense of I can't because God's blessed you so you can't. And he wants you to be wrapped in the truth of Ephesians chapter one and verse four, that he's chosen you, that you're just not a part of a world that he died for, and that he bought the whole thing, but there's always parts of everything when you buy the whole thing that you really don't want. And God says, I don't want you to live your life as though you're not wanted, I chose you. Live knowing that you're chosen and selected by God. Live knowing that every day God says, if you were the only person on this world, I would have done it because I chose you. So live in light of that. You're not just an add-on. Oh, by the way, can you take this one? God didn't say, can I take this one? He says, I want that one. Can you believe how your life will change and you will not live with inferiority if you believe you're chosen by God? See, if we ever accept we're chosen by God, we do not live subject to the words of other people because if God chooses me, it doesn't matter what you say about me. I don't need you to choose me because the King of kings and the Lord of lords chose me. It liberates you. The truth liberates you from lies. People want to know the truth so their problems will change. God wants you to know the truth so that you will change. And so God's just sitting there and he's saying, hey, I've given you the belt of truth. You've been blessed. You're not inadequate. You've been chosen. You're not inferior. And then he says, you've been adopted into the family of God. And what I can tell you is, I have two adopted kids. I have a biological kid. You can conceive by accident. You do not adopt by accident. So you understand that God's adopted you that he wanted to double down. He wanted to make sure to you that you were not just a by chance. You were not just an accident because to be adopted, someone thought it through. And God says, I've adopted you. And adoption meant that you had the full benefits of the family. So you may not feel you belong, but you belong to God. So he goes through inferiority. You're blessed. You've been chosen. You don't have to have, you know, that that kind of inadequacy about you. You've been adopted. He is just challenging the basic things that eat at the core of people. Discover who God says you are, and don't live as though you're not. He then goes on and he says, you've been accepted. You've been accepted in the beloved. God accepts you. He accepts you. And so he goes through all of these things in Ephesians chapter one. He says, wrap them into your life that you're blessed, you're not inadequate, that you're chosen. You don't have to be insecure, that you're adopted. You don't have to be inferior, and you're accepted. You don't have to live as though you're not loved. Everything he said in this book is so that finally, But first of all, put on the truth. Because without the truth, none of the rest of what he's going to ask you to do matters. If you have a choice between the lies of this world 
and the truth of God. Accept God's truth about you. I know you've been lied to your whole life because the devil's a liar. I know that other people have been the echo chamber of those lies. And I know at times you've even lied to yourself and said, I can never be better than I am. Wake up to the truth and wrap yourself in it. 